Hi there, today we're going to talk about rounding. So rounding is making an estimate. You don't need to know the exact amount that something is worth, but you need to know kind of closest to what it is. So for instance, if we have the number 7, if we use our number line here, we have the number 7 directly right here. But we need to figure out just kind of how, how close it is to the nearest 10. So if you look down here, we have 0 and we have 10. Those are our nearest 10s. Those are also called our benchmark numbers. And then in the center here, we have 5. This is our midpoint. It's the exact middle between the two 10s, between the two benchmark numbers. We have 7 right here. So is it closer to the 10 or is it closer to 0? Well, if we look closer at it, we can tell that it's much closer to 10. It's just 1, 2, 3 hops away to 10. And it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hops all the way to 0. So it's much closer to 10. So if we were going to round this number, whether it's closer to 10 or closer to 0, we're going to round up and we're going to round it to the number 10. We have closer to 10 objects than we have closer to 0. Another way to remember this is this little saying here. 5 and above, give it a shove. 4 and below, let it go. So if it is on the midpoint here or above the midpoint between the two benchmark 10s, you're going to go up. If it is 4 or below that, you're going to go down to the lower benchmark 10. Let's try another. Now, we have a bigger number this time. It says round 427 to the nearest 100. Now, that's a key part. You need to know whether you're in the ones, the tens, or the hundreds, or the thousands. In this case, the hundreds right here says 400. You always have to look at the number to the right to help you figure out where you're going to round. So we have 427. So we have to figure out, are we going to round to 400 or are we going to round to 500? We're going to the nearest 100. Now our midpoint between 400 and 500 is 450. Recognize that 5 right there. It's the midpoint between the two benchmark hundreds. Now we look at 427. 427 is about in the middle here. Now, remember the motto, 5 and above, give it a shove, 4 and below, let it go. We have 427. Here we have the 5 here, the midpoint. Is it above the midpoint or below the midpoint? Well, it's most definitely below the midpoint. So we're going to round down. We're going to go to 400. So rounding to the nearest 100 would be 400. And to figure that out, all I really had to do was look at my tens here. So if I'm rounding to the hundreds, I need to look at my tens. If I'm rounding to the tens, I gotta look at my ones. If I'm rounding to my thousands, I have to look at my hundreds. Let's try another, and this time without our number line. Okay, here we find ourselves with rounding 9,641 to the nearest thousand. So if you remember my instruction, you're going to look at the number to the right of the thousands. So we have the thousands right here with 9. So we have to look at the hundreds. So we have 9,641. We don't need to worry about the 41. All we have to do is worry about the hundreds. If we look at here, look at that 6. 5 and above, give it a shove. 4 and below, let it go. So we have to figure out what the 2,000s are surrounding 9,641. Well, the lower one is 9,000. And the upper one is 10,000. So if we look at this 6 here, and think about our midpoint, is 6 above the midpoint or below it? Well, 5 and above, give it a shove. So 6 is above it. So we're going to go up to 10,000. So the nearest thousand would be 10,000. 
Let's try it again. Okay, now we have round 4,642 to the nearest hundred. So we have the ones, the tens, the hundreds right here. So where am I going to go to figure out where I need to round? That's right, look to the one to the right. We're going to look at the tens here. Okay, so we have a four in the tens. And we have to round to the nearest hundred, not the thousands, not the tens, not the ones, but the hundreds. So we have to figure out our two benchmark numbers. Well, here we have 600. So there's going to be 4,600. It's going to be one benchmark number. And then we have to go to the other benchmark number, which would be 4,700. So looking at this, 4,642, we have a 4 here. Remember our whole rule, 5 and above, give it a shove. 4 and below, let it go. A 4 in the tens tells you that it's closer to 4,600 rather than 4,700. If we were to make the benchmark here, which would be 4,650, well, look at that 10 there. 4 is below that. It would be down right about here. So then we are going to round to the nearest 100, would be 4,600. Okay, let's do a review. The students sold 536 candy bars for their fundraiser. Rounding to the nearest hundred, how many candy bars did they sell? So we know that they sold 536. Can you look and figure out to the nearest hundred how many candy bars did they sell? If you said 500, pat yourself on the back. If we look here at the three, that's in the tens. So we have to figure out the two benchmark hundreds. Well, 500 is one of them. 600 would be the other. Now we look at our tens. Remember the rule of five and above, give it a shove. In the tens here, we have only three tens. That's below our midpoint. Our midpoint would be 550. 310 or 30 is below 550. It's right about here on our line. So we would round down. We would go down to 500. So rounding to the nearest 100, how many candy bars did they sell? 500, about 500 candy bars. Today we've been practicing rounding. To help you with your rounding, use your number line. And remember the saying of five and above, give it a shove, four and below, let it go. When you can find your two benchmark numbers and then look for your midpoint, it'll make rounding really easy for you. Great job, and I can't wait to talk to you more about math soon.